Hey everybody and welcome back to Mal's Board Game Room. I am doing an unboxing video because I just got back from Gobfest. So Gobfest is a board game convention that is held in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, which was three days. So Friday night, all day Saturday, pretty much all day Sunday. Uh, Sunday. So it was great. Got lots of games played. They also host a flea market. So a few games came with me. Um, but before I get into that, I want to show you a few things that I added into my game, my game room. Um, so I live in Acme, Alberta, which is small population, 650 people. But there was a local artisan that had posted on our community group that she was making these kind of small palette type coasters. And she would custom, you could make them custom. So... I got some. So these are little pallet coasters. And then check, check it out. They say Mel's board game room on it. So I got a set of eight. I am so thrilled with these. I think they just look super cool. And they just kind of, because I mean, I have the new pre mat here right now, but sometimes I don't. So just in case, you know, to. <laughs> I'm so in love with them. And they were really affordable and, you know, support a local artisan. So I was I'm very excited for this. And then um, Lee surprised me with the, with, well, with a gift. I think this was originally intended to do, to be for Christmas, uh, not Christmas, for my birthday, which is in June. Um, but <laughs> Lee, he, he's not great for, for waiting. So he got this done. I wasn't expecting this. So he just gave it to me right away. So now, first of all, this was done by PDC Designs and Engraving. Um, I'll show that to you. Um, they're based out of Calgary, so be sure to check them out. Um, but this is Mel's board game room crib board. And this is my first crib board that I have that will actually, because there's four, like there's four rows here. So you could play four competitive. Um, my other crib board, my regular crib board have three. I have seen crib board that had just a two. I'm really excited to get a four and I really want to try four competitive play now. But the fact that this is Mel Morgan room, I adore this. And on the back, you just have like the slide thing here. And then on uh, in here, you have the, the pegs, but like these are very nice pegs and yeah, a set of four pegs in here. So I was thrilled. I, I am so pleased with this and I'm actually having this gentleman make me some more wooden component bowls. So that will be coming in the near future as well. So yeah, really, really thrilled with these. So these are my not Gobfest related purchases or additions to the game room. So now before we get into the game hall. I want to point out that I sold some games, which almost never happened. I have a really hard time letting go of the games. I buy them because I like them. So because I like them, I don't get rid of them. But I did enjoy getting rid of four games uh, at Gobfest. And well, five, because one was a friend's game, but that one doesn't count because I kept my copy. I sold his. Um, now, one of them was um, a battle line because I have shot and taught and it's the same game, just reskin. So I really don't need two versions of the same game. Um, one is Gloomhaven. I sold my big thing of Gloomhaven because I'm two years and halfway through Jaws of the Lion. Gloomhaven just might never happen for me. I quite enjoyed Jaws of the Lion, but I don't, with campaign games, I don't dedicate enough to them to get them played. So because it took me so long just on Jaws of the Lion, we're still not done. I mean, what, like 10 years on Gloomhaven? Like, I don't, I think that one's just not going to happen for me. So I've made my peace with that. That's all good. Um... I don't remember the other two that I sold. Oh, one was First Martian. We played it. It was 
the theme we really enjoyed, but it was a very high complexity game. So it was just looking back, I was like, I don't think we'll play this one. Um, so I ended up selling that one as well. And one was Time's Up. Now I enjoyed Time's Up, but this one was Time's Up Who Am I? Which had like different characters on there, but I really personally suck at remembering characters or actors or uh, celebrities names so I think it would just be really really hard so I, I ended up getting rid of that one all right let me show you so first of all hostage negotiator is not a game that I purchased this was already in my collection but I had lent it to a friend so it's just back so I'm just going to show it because it's in the bag um, now, Hostage Negotiator has the same type of mechanism as Final Girl. It is a solo game. I had played the app and really enjoyed it. So I wanted to try the card game version. And basically, there's some sort of hostage situation and you need to play the card trying to defuse the, the hostage situation. Um, and it just was really cool. So... Um, so I have this one and now it's it's back home in my collection. So hostage negotiator. Um, so I was really proud at the fact that I got rid of such a big game, but I've got Dwellings of Alverdale that came came home. So I have a just an equally large game. Okay, this one honestly is not as big as Gloomhaven was. Um, but I have Dwellings of Alphadale added to my collection. I'm looking in the back there and it's saying, oh, it's easy setup because they've got the game tree. So I'm really excited to see what all is in here and how this all looks. I love the theme. Um, I've heard great things about this one and I am really looking forward to giving it a try. So I'll probably end up doing like unboxing of each game, maybe not all of them, but most of them. So this one, I definitely will just to see and show you guys what the game trays inside of here looks like. So uh, Dwellings of Alphadel. So that was one that followed me home um, over the weekend. Then I have a couple of bags here. So let's see what we got in here. Um, okay, yes. So my friend, so we, all of my gaming group, we kind of all got an Airbnb together. So before on day, on the Sunday, before we left for Gobfest, and this is a day of the flea market, we're packing up because we're, we're not coming back. But then they're also like, okay, well, before I bring this to the flea market, does anybody want this? And then I ended up grabbing... Florenza from my friend Kayla. Um, it looks it looks like an interesting Euro game. So I haven't given this one uh, a try before. It just looks like one of those economic type games, which I enjoy. So I'm excited to give it a try. Um, Florenza. So I'll be I'll be letting you know once I I play this one, see what it's like. Then there was a couple of games on here that it was just games I had brought to play. Um, I will show you this one. So this is a prototype of a new love letter theme game that Asthma Day has going, and I'm just play testing it for them. So I signed a do not release. So I cannot show you this game, but if you are interested in play testing it with me, I will have it at the Acme Legion Day on Saturday. So you could come and play test this game with me. Um, and I, I quite enjoyed it. It was neat. So we did end up playing it at, uh, Gob fest and I, I enjoyed my play of it. So yeah, I come to the Acme Legion Day and give this a try. Okay, then the on well this week the Three Hills Art Society is has a play and it's clue. So uh, Lee and I are planning on attending it. So I'm super excited to attend Clue. Last month, we attended the Sherlock Holmes. Um, I forget what the full title was, but it was like a Sherlock Holmes. Play. It was amazing. It was so good. I would quite enjoyed it. So we're super excited to giving uh, Clue a try. It has a neat, fun date night. And then if you follow me at all, you know, I like to do my themes 
weekend on my themes day and we'll kind of watch movies and match them with games. So we're going to watch the play Clue. And then I got Clue Tree Tree at Tudor's Mansion. So <laughs> maybe play this as well to just kind of go on and continue building the theme. So I don't know a lot about this. This is a mystery we're trying to solve. Um, I don't know if it's like on lock or if it's like some of those adventure games. Cause I, from what I understand, you are like kind of going through the mansion trying to look for clues, but so I'm excited to pair this up with the, the play clue. Um, now they're doing five showings of the, that play. So if you are in the area and want to check them out, then be sure to go check out the, uh, the three Hills art Academy. I'll make sure the link is below, but yeah, I'm so excited for clue. Okay. So now let's go into, I brought a bag, like uh, one of those big fold up bags at Gobfest Cause I suspected I wasn't coming home empty handed. Um, in fact, I know I wasn't. So let me show you what I got here. Now, this was also the first time I finally got to go to Pemetaway, which is a board game store in Edmonton. They are one of the sponsors of Gobfest, and they're actually just one block over. So it was super convenient to stop by. And they also had like kind of a booth right at Gobfest as well, if you wanted to purchase anything. So I was thrilled to be able to support them. And this is one of the new games that they had come out and it's dinosaur theme. But what is really kind of interesting about this is you, it's kind of about finding the dinosaur fossils and being a paleontologist, which is what my friend's son is planning to study to become. So, and there's some of the couples that we play a lot of games with. So I was like, this will be perfect to play with them. So I purposely got it for that. They, and this is a nearly published game and it's called Holotype. And it came with a little mini expansion as well. So it says a light strategy worker placement game for two to five players collect fossils, conduct research, and publish your findings. So you're a paleontologist and you're, you know, do whatever it is that paleontologists do. Um, we have like the world's largest dinosaur museum just 30 minutes from my house here. So um, it's just neat to have games like this. My friend ended up playing it that day while she was visiting uh, Pemetta Way earlier before I got there. And she says, you want to sell this to me. This game is so much better than it sounded. So um, I'm super excited to give this a try. It's going to be super cool. Um, we want to do a game day and go at the Royal Tyrell Museum, kind of tour the museum, look at all the, the dinosaur uh, exhibitions, and then go into the cafeteria and play a bunch of dinosaur board games. So this is a, a thing that we were talking about maybe doing sometime um, with my gaming group. So it would be super cool to do that, but definitely would need to bring this one out. So this is Holotype. Okay, so that was actually the first game I bought that weekend, I had I went straight to Pemetta Way because the the con uh, convention wasn't started yet, and I got that one. So let's see what else I bought. <clears throat> this one here is just another game that I brought to play. So I'm not gonna. It's just a Pierre. Um, I punched it the day before and then brought it so that my friends could play it while we were there. And then this one is a game that my friend had picked up for me and brought and this is key of the kingdom this is one of those dollar um five dollar games that they had and i don't understand how they do this because they're really great games and this one looks very interesting so i'm super excited to to try it it's by restoration game which i really enjoy um and it just looks very cool like and i mean it's heavy there's a lot to this game um, just another day in the kingdom says, pick up some magic beans from the sunbathing genie, then met a boundless 
a boundless bed bug near the giant pumpkin snuck past the cyclop with the help of a spry spider, hopped in a teleporting spool with the magic key, and defeated the demon king once and for all. All in a day's work when you're a hero. So I think you're kind of building up a story as you play. I don't know a lot about it. I'm really excited to give this a try. I think it looks very cool. Um, and I'm not sure what's going on with the board, but it looks like it folds up as you play. So, yeah, key to the kingdom. Make sure you check out your local Dollarama and see. I always kind of make a point of walking by because they've had amazing games there. Really worth it. Okay, this is one that um, one of my fellow contributors on our Family Plays Game Voices had talked about. So I was super excited to when I saw it, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this and try it." Because when they when they had done their segment on it, this game looked just so so amazing, and it's called Broken and Beautiful. So this is about. Um, I guess in some of the Asian countries, like bro they'll take broken pottery and kind of re-put it together with mul um, melted gold <coughs> to repurpose this broken thing and make it like into a new, just as beautiful uh, piece of pottery. And it's like, just kind of like, it's just because it's broken doesn't mean it's trash. You can repurpose it and make it into something beautiful and useful again. And it's just looked like a super cool card game. When they talked about it, I was really intrigued and I was so glad I, I saw it at the auction, uh, at the flea market. So home it came. So broken and beautiful. Okay. What else we have in here? Um, Okay, I'm going to put this over here because this is part of other stuff. Okay, so they also had, and I kind of was looking, <laughs> after I say that, after I got Dwelling of Albedales, but I was kind of like, okay, I have a fair bit of room for smaller games, so I'll try to look at smaller games. Now, granted, I understand I got some really big ones, but when I saw this one, I was super excited about, I really enjoy KTBG games. Um, and they had Problem Picnic Attack of the Ants. So I was like, perfect. I, I want this one. So far, every game I've played with them, I quite, quite enjoy. So might as well add another one to my collection. Um, so we'll have to give this one a try. And just in true KTBG fashion, I know this game is going to be just gorgeous and cute. So I cannot wait. And then what else we got? Oh, so while at the convention, I had signed up to play Age, um, no, Railways of the World. And I, I have them here. So that's what I'm pointing out. I have Railways of the World. I have Portugal, England, Western US and Europe, plus the original map that came with it. And they were playing Australia. I love that game it's like a train pick up and deliver game that is just so fun we played it it was a blast i enjoyed it it's just such a great game um a lot of the train themed game i i really enjoy i have age of steam over there i have transcontinental um the first one that i came across was railways of the world the card game which was absolutely amazing so i saw isle of trains all aboard and I wanted it. <laughs> so, you know, if you know you really enjoy a genre, and then this one looks different, um, and it looks really neat. So I am very excited for, for this one. I actually, I was like, I was done. I sat down, and then I was sitting to next to the people that have where my my games were, like the table where my games were at. And I kind of looked over, and I was kind of, oh, like can I can I see it? And I was like, okay. I really want it. And it's a small game that will fit on my small shelf. So all good. Um, and then what is this? Oh, we'll, we'll add that one because that's a pile one. Um, then, as I mentioned, Pemetuwe was there. Um, Roberta Taylor also was there. Roberta Taylor is a board game designer that is based out of Alberta. And she was attending GobFest, and we played a bunch of games together. It was amazing. She also was there to teach 
her game Maple Valley, which is a sequel to Creature Comfort. And for what I'm understanding, it's same art, same beautiful um, kind of setting, but a bit more complex of a game, but I've heard really great, amazing thing. As I mentioned, Pemetue was there and they were selling the deluxe uh, Kickstarter copy. So I've got Maple Valley. Um, I don't know tons about it. Unfortunately, I, was, I wasn't able to attend the teach that she did, which would have been convenient that I know how to play this, but um, I have this here. Uh, I'm super excited. I'm visiting with Roberta next month. So I'm going to bring my copy for her to sign. Um, and then, yeah, so I have Maple Valley, which is going to be so like, it just looks beautiful. It's assemble your band of friend to hike, climb and paddle the trail of Maple Valley. Find what you need to craft delightful flavors and get the festivities ready to go. Uh, oh, and it has green trays in this one as well. Like, uh, green trays. Okay, very excited. I will definitely be doing an unboxing of this one. I, uh, I cannot wait to play it. So I'll make sure to bring this one to, to the Acme Board Game Day. Okay, what else do we have in here? Oh, so I will show this on. Uh, I went to one table and then when I got there, I was like, Melanie, come here, here, let me give you a game. And it's a card, it's a single card. And it says, I guess they were part of like this game design um, challenge. And it was design, design a game that you can play that is only one card. And from what I understand is you just play it either with chips or, or something. Like you just add a couple of tokens. And this is a full game on, on a single card. So uh, I appreciate this. this. is super cool. It's kind of interesting. Um, so I got that one. And it is called Fire Pot. So I'll have to give that a try. Um, and it was saying like, I don't know, it has dice. I don't know if it plays with dice. I'll have to, to see what it is. But it says, you know, require, they, they suggest candies, either Skittles, Smarties, Jelly Beans, and then you kind of have different of any color and then one six-sided dice. I have a vase of dice of all different colors. I might just use like dice as my tokens. Um, but yeah, this is super excited. I'm excited to give that one a try. Oh, so we just did our top 100. The final installment of our top 10 to 1 is coming out. This is a game that Travis had talked about in this one that I hadn't had, and he was comparing it to Sagrada, which I quite enjoy. And I had heard tons about this game, but had not had the chance to play it. So they were selling it there. And they were selling the... This is like the deluxe with two expansions. Not that I a big, I don't worry much about expansions, but I mean, if it's in there, I'm not going to pull it out. So this is role player. Um, from, oh, and it has an insert, one of those foam board inserts in here as well. So that's kind of neat when you buy secondhand games, like people will bling up their games and then you just end up getting that like really neat copy. So I have heard amazing thing about role player. I have been wanting to play it and try it. And when Travis did is a kind of comparison to it, to Sagrada, and he was explaining it in our top 100. I was like, oh my God, I can't. I need this game because now I, I'm aware this is one that I'm going to enjoy. So I now have role player added to my collection and looking forward to giving this one a try for sure. And it's one of those games that's made to look like it's a book. You know, I, I just like that. I should do like my top nine games shaped like a book because I have a lot. But role player is one that came home with me this weekend. Um, this one, it's just, it's just a field. It looks so cool. I was like, okay, I, I kind of just, <laughs> just from the look of the box and everything and the theme, it looks so cool. And it's called Terrors of London. And it's one of those metal clasps on the side. And then the game, I, I like these. Um, I bought this on Look Alone. I know not very much about it. It says, Welcome to the dark street of Victorian London, a place where evil has risen from the deep 
and the fate of the mortal li world lies in the end of the beast and devils. And it looks, it's a card game. Um, and I'm assuming kind of like a battle type card game. Um, you have some, like, it looks really neat. The artwork is interesting. The theme really appeals. And the box is just so amazing. So we'll have to give this one a try. Terrors of London. All right. <coughs> I'm excited for this one. So I saw people playing this one. It was set up on the table. Pemetaway was selling it. And I was like, okay, great, no brainer. I, I'm coming home with this one because the table present was unreal. The characters were just so adorable, like so adorable. It's crazy. So I was like, Kate, with Pamela Way, I was like, I am coming home with Maple Valley. I had already bought a holotype. He's like, and I'm coming home with this one as well. He's like, Kate, no problem. And this is Night Parade. And let me show you because, oh my God, how adorable are these? Like, so you have like the black cat with the big eyes that looks like Felix the cat. You have these little blue frogs and like the characters and the components are so, so beautiful. I, it was one, one of those games that was being played and I walked by and I stopped and I'm like, you need to show this to me. And I took a bunch of pictures. So be sure to check out my Facebook page if you want to see more pictures. I'll make sure I post a few at the end of this video as well. But pretty. Oh, my God. And it's like an area control game, which I do enjoy. So I was buying this one, but they had it at the flea market. So I'm like, yeah, okay, no brainer. I will, I will grab this copy. Plus, this was a copy from the first Kickstarter that also came with the Moonlight Whispers that gives you extra characters you can play as. The little turtles and the raccoon. <laughs> Okay. I was like, I have a turtle. His name is Paul. So I always immediately am so excited about the turtles. So we got this one as well because, well, it was part of the thing. It just came together. So I get these two extra super cute characters. So we got that. Then Pemetaway was selling the Monkey King expansion. So I'm like, I, I still want this one. And this has a little yellow monkeys and my friend ashley always plays yellow so i was like well we need the yellow pieces so monkey king expansion I actually ended up doing a, a trade for this one um and then it came with a mask so i think the well like the original game just has the cars that you create the board with and this one um from the original kickstarter i guess they made a mat so <clears throat> it's just just a neat mat that keeps everything organized that you would play from. So I cannot wait to play this. And they explained the game to me. It sounds like a very straightforward, simple gameplay. Um, but you wait till you see this. See that I'll do an unboxing on this one because we have to at how beautiful all these components were. And then you walk in and say, oh, that looks cute. Oh, look, Felix the cat. And then by the time they were done and the board was filled, it was like, Oh my God, this game is so stunning. Like take a picture and very pleased. So I don't know how many games are here. I don't know how many followed me home. Keep in mind, the most important thing is I managed to sell four games, which is huge for me. Uh, but yeah, definitely way more than four followed me home. So it's not a working system, but... <laughs> I'm just too excited to care right now. So, yeah, be sure to stay tuned. I'll be doing some unboxing with some of these just because they're worth taking a closer look at. So uh, let me know which convention have you attended lately? Do they have, like, an auction or a flea market? And what was your, like, what was the best buy you had at a flea market? Bye, everybody.